Hello, I'm Martin Warwick. We are at the DSP Leaders Forum in Windsor, in just outside London, to the west of London. And with me, at, just at this moment, is uh, Leon Chang, who is Director of Technology Architecture at AT&T. Leon, thanks for talking to us. Good to Thank see you, you again. See you. Let's begin with this one. Um, with 5G comes uh, a whole plethora of new service offerings. Uh, service providers are hoping to provide these to their customers in due course, and many of them are going to be delivered on demand and be customised to optimise the user experience. What role will orchestration play in fulfilling these requirements? Because it's a complex task. So, um, as we always say, 5G is going to be heavily use case driven. Um, it'll be catered for various needs of the businesses and end users. Um, we see orchestration as a key of pulling together all of the components that are going to be very software centric, that are going to be distributed and highly flexible. So um, we, that's why we put a lot of effort in the likes of ORAN, the likes of ONAP, in order to facilitate uh, orchestration, not only in one carrier, but also the orchestration of the entire technical ecosystem. Thank you. Okay. Uh, second question to you is this. Um, open source has been an important part of many service provider transformations leading to 5G. How much of your 5G network at AT&T will leverage open source? And did you choose the areas you wanted to leverage open source within? Um, so we're transforming, we've been transforming uh, for a long time from a telco into more of a software company. Um, so a lot of the internal processes, technologies and architecture are heavily based on open source. Um, we do have uh, a lot of internal skills that are um, working on the various components of the technology and the organization. Um, however, we are proactively reaching out to the open source community in order to tap into the much wider developer ecosystem. There have been so much talk, so many conversations in the industry about the technology needed uh, to deploy 5G, and we'll touch on that in a moment, but we've also learned that transformation of culture is also key to everything. Um, how are you addressing it within AT&T? Because changing the culture of a telco is a hard task. Well, it is, especially for AT&T, where we have more than 260,000 employees worldwide. Um, one of the biggest challenges in the entire transformation, not only the latest, is how to reskill our staff and how to change the culture of the company. Right, so AT&T actually has a very comprehensive program where we are focusing on retraining a very large number of our employees uh, with the equipment, with the new skill sets and the knowledge that they need for the new world. Right? So the way we do that is by um, providing training programs, providing tuition assistance um, in order for them to get nano degrees that are relevant in the new technology arenas. Um, but there is a new social contract in that the company will provide all of that facilities and resources to, to our staff, but the staff will have to do this in their own time in terms of retraining themselves. And so far it has been running extremely successfully. Thanks Leon, let's get back to 5G as we mentioned a couple of minutes ago. How much of the AT&T network will be new in the new 5G world? And how is your current network, your physical network, going to play a role within that and delivering the 5G services? So, um, our understanding is that the 4G and the 5G technologies are going to exist, coexist for a long time. Yeah. Um, and it's vitally important that we facilitate standards-based um, interoperability between the two systems. Um, so within AT&T, we have a very structured path that actually um, gradually move from a 4G-centric network into a 5G-enabled network and then into a 5G-centric network. So um, in the process, we're leveraging all of the technologies and all of the standards to try and facilitate smooth interoperability between all of our current infrastructure. We're moving on from field trials and talk about imminent deployment in various parts of the world. I don't want to put you on the spot or to say it's going to happen next Thursday or anything like that, but when do you see 5G within AT&T becoming a de facto standard that you're going to be working to? 
Well, we're working to that area. Uh, what I can tell you, though, is AT&T uh, in the US is the first to make 5G commercially available in 2018. And as of, uh, as of now, we have about 19 markets available um, with 5G coverage. And just last month, we have announced that we were able to achieve 2 gigabit per second speed on a 5G connection. So we're making very good progress. We're leading the market on that front and uh, we'll kind of continue to make that transition. Really interesting stuff. Leon Chan, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Martin. It's good talking to you. And you too.